Today, let's talk about the problem children in Honkai Star Rail's meta, because over the last few weeks, tier lists have started to essentially homogenize and are starting to look the same, but there are still a few characters that are pretty contentious that people will get upset over if they're not just like straight up rated as an S. So today, let's try to throw tier lists out the window. Again. Hi, I'm Lace, and as always, waifu over meta, but with that, Let's get started. The first character I want to talk about is Yan Qing because everyone gets really upset when he is not rated an S. It's like, oh man, he's not an A, he is a strong S, his DPS is an S. So I think one thing that we can agree on is that he's not as strong as Zila. No one is yet, and that's okay. In summary, he's cracked out because he's able to dish out so much damage thanks to his built-in crit. We've got crit rate over here, we've got crit rate over here, crit damage over here, which means that you can just focus building on crit damage to really juice out his ceiling. If you head over to the DPS rankings, you'll see that he is pretty highly regarded in single target damage. But as most of you know, the moment he gets even touched or receives any damage at all, it's freaking doomed. It's over for him. And coming back over to the DPS simulations by Pridewin, Grimro, whoever it is, you can see that he is technically within 5%, but this comparison really doesn't tell the whole story because first of all, Seelie's resets are actually not taken into consideration in these damage simulations. But second of all, Yanqing is also assumed to never get hit, which means that these sims actually favor Yanqing despite Seelie's resets being used in pretty much every single battle in the game because of the current enemy meta of bosses and trash units and bosses and trash units. And so what this means is that to attain this level of damage, you typically play Yanqing with Japad over here. Honestly though, that's a pretty harsh requirement, but there are some people who will play him with either March 7th or Fire MC because we've got shields and taunts over here and we've got the aggro multiplier from March. To be honest, these two actually kind of works, right? Because on top of their taunting abilities, we've also got Yanqing's own inherent ability to have his aggro halved. But being forced to actually take Fire MC or March 7th is actually not exactly the greatest thing. Because with Japad, you are able to actually get away with not taking a healer. But with these two, it's very likely that you're still going to need a healer, especially in the context of MOC. And so maybe your team is starting to look like this, right? You've got two defensive supports, one offensive, and the hyper carry Yanqing. And that's why Japad is the premier pick and why I would rate Yanqing just slightly under the Zilla and the Jingyuan. Again, it's not about his damage output. It's very clear that he can do a lot of damage, especially in a single target scenario. It's more about the lack of flexibility. If you have Yanqing and you pair him with Japad, their roommates, they never leave each other, then yes, Yanqing is definitely an S tier, combining with two offensive supports like this team or this team over here. However, if not, if you are forced to run him with either the March or the Fire MC and you have to run a healer instead of the offensive support, then I would say he's a A plus, S minus, whatever. It doesn't matter about the letters, it's more about understanding the trade-offs. The total team DPS of this one is definitely going to be lower than if you're going to be running like any of these three. On the other hand, when when we compare the Yanqing with the Jingyuan, the first thing is that Jingyuan's abilities and his damage, his DPS, is not conditional. Yeah, sure, it looks like Jingyuan is 20% worse in single target damage, but if we flip over, then you can see that the damage sims show that he has 30% more damage over Yanqing in a multi-target setting. And with even more targets than just three, he's gonna scale even harder. Now, his single target DPS is absolutely not bad because of the way that his Lightning Lord works. In a nutshell, this thing does AoE and single target damage very well well because of the targeting. And that is just so incredibly important in this meta, again with bosses and trash mobs. Kill off the trash mobs and then go back and focus on the boss. And so combining that with the fact that you can run Jing Yuan with whoever like this comp over here, or maybe your standard hyper carry comp like this one over here, this Zila could actually be a Jing Yuan instead. It's for these reasons that I would say that Jing Yuan is all around a slightly, slightly better pick than the Yan Qing. And so my guys, to summarize, in my opinion, Zilla is definitely the S+, plus. she is better than Jing Yuan. Jing Yuan is slightly better than Yanqing, and so Jing Yuan is the S, and Yanqing you can call it the S minus, the A plus, whatever. Again, not because of his damage, but because of his flexibility. In this meta, if the enemies were element neutral, I would play Zila first. If I didn't have Zila, then I would play Jing Yuan, and if I didn't have Jing Yuan, then I would play Yanqing. And if the enemy is weak to ice, then it's Yanqing first preference, 100%. That's it. Okay, next. Clara.
Early meta Clara was really interesting because she was described as the premier AoE physical attacker with the highest theoretical damage ceiling in the game. However, I think a lot of people are finally understanding that you can't base damage simulations on an RNG mechanic like countering. Or maybe you don't get to counter because she gets frozen or hard CC'd. And then that, my guys, is called a DPS loss. And I gotta admit it, I was also trying to run this DPS hyper carry Clara. And for quite a while, it actually worked. And it still works, actually. Just, it's harder to use, especially in the context of MOC. Because as we progress through the game, the enemy crowd control is just becoming more and more of a pain in the ass. And when Clara is purposely trying to get hit, with uh, this ultimate over here, and then she does get hit, which is great, but then she gets CC'd, which is not great because then she can't counter back. At that point, she's just a meat shield. Also, I've been blessed with six Sushangs, and Sushang's cute. That's the, the real reason why Clara is getting replaced for me. And so in terms of that kit, again, I wanna focus on the massive aggro that is being generated from the ultimate. At a base value of 125 because she is destruction, and then multiplying it by five because it's a 500% multiplier, that means that her personal aggro, whilst under the effects of her ultimate, is 600 125. And assuming that her teammates each have 100 aggro each, this means that she is going to be targeted about 68% of the time. However, in reality, it's going to be a lot more because as you can see, a whole bunch of hunt and erudition characters are all in the base aggro of 75. And on top of that, the hunt characters themselves also have abilities to further modify their personal aggro. So Dan Hung, Sili, Su Shang, we've got Yan Qing over here. So really, Clara should be getting hit the majority of the time. And so in the context of MOC, which has really really, really hard hitting mobs, she should be built more defensively for now. Because one day I do think that there is a future where everybody is DPS and DPS Clara in particular also comes back only when our teams are fully juiced out just not right now. And if you do end up combining her with Silver Wolf and running the metaphysical team, which you should because it is actually quite strong, then I do think that her value actually really skyrockets. All right, let's talk about Himiko. Oh, Himiko, Himiko, Himiko. Everyone from the last video was like, man, Himiko's not bad. She's so freaking underrated. And like, you're right, she's not bad. She's not. But that's not what I was trying to say. What I was trying to say is that she is not as competitive as some of the other picks. Against fire weak enemies, like sure, she is certainly one of the better picks. But in a more element neutral setting like this one over here, would you pick Himeko? Or would you pick Jingyuan? Or would you pick Zilla? That, my guys, is what I'm trying to say. Would you pick Himeko? over those other characters. And their issue really is with the current meta right now, where our meta looks pretty much like this. A large part of the total team HP for the enemy is actually loaded on the boss. In an AoE setting, she's gonna maul these guys. However, she is gonna quickly kill these two first, and then she's gonna be left into a single target setting, because that's just what the meta is right now. So she will have pretty extreme DPS, like this, and then when we get here, her DPS is just gonna fall off a cliff. And so you can see why characters like Zila actually thrives here, right? Kill this, reset, and then attack the boss. Kill this one, reset, attack the boss, and then do really, really good single target damage to chip down the boss HP. However, if the enemy meta ever goes towards something like this, where instead of having like a really skewed distribution to the boss HP, and the distribution of the HP is a lot more equal, then this is where you're gonna see the erudition characters, such as Himiko, really thrive. Because Zilla is not gonna get any resets off of this. And so the last thing about Himiko is that the game is designed to give us options, right? So for example, this ice out of space. I could use Himiko to fight this guy, but I could also use Dan Hung, I could use Sile as well. And with the introduction of Silver Wolf, I could also force Physical, I could force Jin Yuan. I obviously wouldn't use Yan Qing because of the Ice Resist, but the question here is, would I rather use Himiko here, or would I rather use somebody else? And so it's for all of these reasons why I think being rated at an A, that's honestly pretty fair. My final note for her is that I just really wish that her talent was a little bit better, because again, in a single boss scenario, it's not gonna go off that often. And you bet, if I ever got Himiko, I would definitely be building her over hook, no matter what the DPS charts say. I don't care. But that, my guys, is the meta breakdown. It's just not your meta to dominate yet, Himiko. And speaking of it's not your meta yet, I would say something similar for your boy Sampo over here. This guy is actually pretty interesting and also quite strong. And for those of you who haven't had the pleasure of playing him yet, he essentially, in a nutshell, is a very, very SP efficient damage dealer, where he applies dots on his basic attack, on his skill and his ultimate, because it applies to all attacks. And all of these skills are actually multi-hit. This one actually attacks three times, and I believe the ultimate attacks four times to everybody. And the wind dot, the wind shear, actually stacks up five times. On top of that, his ultimate also essentially makes dots do more damage to the target. And so yeah, in a vacuum, he is certainly good. However, 
in this meta, if I wanted to pick a green attacker, I'm probably picking Danhung. And again, it's just the nature of the meta. It is very much predominantly a more single target meta with some AoE. If we went over to some AoE, you can see Sampo actually is quite competitive. And on top of his AoE damage, he can actually break pretty well as well because of the multi-hit attacks. I personally think that when more dot units come out with like each of their maybe unique effects, for example, maybe they'll extend the dot durations, they'll heal on dot, the dot explosions. Maybe they're able to speed up the triggering of dots. Characters with these kinds of mechanics, I think is going to make the dot team super super strong and my guys don't take my word for it because these mechanics actually do already exist in the game for example this one over here i do however think that there is potential for this guy to actually be more of like a sub dps who also helps with breaking and he would probably occupy one of the offensive support slots however unfortunately i haven't tested enough to know and if you have let us know down in the comments below there is one particular point i wanted to address about sample and it's that dots also work better when the enemy gets more turns but if the enemy gets more turns, that means they are probably hitting us more. And at this stage of the game, where we're still trying to stabilize our survivability, that unfortunately just adds so much risk to our team. But again, there probably will be a point in time in the future where we can run like a pure DPSs, where that risk just doesn't actually matter anymore. And so in my opinion, they purposely kept Sample's ratios kind of low because when more dot characters are introduced and there is kind of like explosion mechanics or whatever, like say you've got three different types of dots stack up and then you explode them all, I think it's going to be balanced around something like that. But that, my guys, is more of like a one day thing. However, that is going to bring us to the end of the video. I would love to hear your thoughts as to the characters that we discussed, whether I discussed them fairly. And if you did enjoy the video, I would really appreciate a like, subscribe, notification bell on. However, as your boy Yenching once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.